Today we're going to show you how to replace a diaphragm in a 46157S. As you can see, we've already kind of prepped this regulator by taking off the uh, top cap, uh, the top plate, and remove the spring. I'm going to show you how to take off the spring tower, remove the diaphragm assembly, and replace the diaphragm on the assembly. Now there's a couple of reasons why you would need to replace the diaphragm. One is annual inspections um, and the other is if you've had a failure and the regulator is venting. Okay, So the first thing that I'm going to do now is remove all the bolts from the spring tower and so that we can get to the regulator. Now one of the things here also is to make sure that we have already isolated our regulator. We have the upstream <coughs> valve closed as well as the downstream valve closed. We're going to remove our control line to make sure that we have no pressure on the inside of the vessel. So at this point, we can go ahead and start removing our bolts. Now one of the things you may want to do is have a thin wall socket because this bulge really causes a little bit of a problem if you have a standard socket. <coughs> Otherwise you'll have to use a wrench to get to these. And <coughs> in a lot of cases you'll be out in a field with rusted bolts so make sure you've got <coughs> some sort of lube or <coughs> spray that will loosen up these bolts and nuts for you. <coughs> so now we've removed all the bolts. We're going to lift this spring tower off. Now oftentimes when you do remove this spring tower, the diaphragm may stick. If that's the case, since you're replacing it anyway, it's not going to matter if it tears the gasket on it. In this case, it comes off cleanly. So we set that aside. Now most of the time these diaphragms are covered with molly. So you may want to have a rag so that you can pull that off. Oftentimes when these have been in a field for a long time, that gasket and that rubber will stick very hard on here. So you will need to use a putty knife to try to get under that edge and remove that gasket and that material there. Okay. Also on the mating surface of the spring tower, you may also need to remove the gasket material from there as well. So now we're going to remove the diaphragm. Of course, this one's coming off very easily. Spin that counterclockwise. And now we're ready to go ahead and remove our bolt, our lock nut, and our top plate to replace this diaphragm. So now we've got removed our diaphragm assembly from the regulator. I'm going to go ahead and get our bolt seated on there, hold that. Now these things are usually pretty tight, so what you may want to do is get this on a nice surface. Hold your wrench against the hard surface and take your larger wrench, pop that a few times, 
so you can loosen up that nut and take that off. Now, if you've got a vise on the back of your truck, you demand because you'll be able to do this, just set this in the vise, okay? So we're going to take this and unscrew it until that's nice and loose. Remove your nut. Remove your lock nut. Now you need to split this away. I highly recommend you split it from the top. Oftentimes these things will stick very hard together. In this case, it came apart fine. Make sure that this is not scarred so that it's going to create a, a really good seal. You're going to pull this through here. You're going to take off your bottom plate and you're going to replace this o-ring. This o-ring is a part number 902922. It's very important that you replace that o-ring every single time you replace your diaphragm. It becomes compressed and uh, needs to be replaced. Okay. So now we're going to <coughs> show how to replace this. Put on your bottom plate. Put on your diaphragm. And put on your top diaphragm plate. Replace your lock washer. Place your nut. Tighten by hand. Invert your diaphragm so you can get to your top nut. Tighten that back up. Now, as you tighten this up, make sure that your bottom plate is not moving. Hold it with your fingers because you don't want to twist the diaphragm as you're reinstalling it. Make sure that you don't put a twist in that diaphragm by anything moving. Okay, you can see now we've re replaced that. Now we're going to reinstall this we're reinstalling our diaphragm assembly into our 461.57S. So the first thing we're going to do is thread that in there, turn it clockwise till it stops. Then you need to back it off a half to a full turn. Okay. At this point you want to check to make sure you've got free travel on your valve. This is a very important step. This is where you put your fold into your rollout diaphragm, hence the name rollout. It gives you a large surface area. Press it down in there firmly, but make sure that you have this fold in the regulator. <clears throat> At this time with a new diaphragm, you may want to put some silicone lube or uh, you may want to use some molly to put that and give it just a little um, extra conditioning. So now we're going to replace our spring tower. Now, our spring tower has a travel indicator. You want to make sure that the foot of that travel indicator is placed on the inside of our top plate okay so to do that with your left hand you will hold that travel indicator up and you will start putting your spring tower on as you put the spring tower on you're going to push up against the diaphragm 
on the right hand side and let go of that travel indicator and you will see it fall into that groove there. As you bring the spring tower down you want to make sure that you do not pinch the diaphragm. So with your left hand push the diaphragm in on all sides to make sure that it is properly seated. You can tell when it's properly seated there is no gap on high gap on one side of the diaphragm um, spring tower as opposed to the other side. So with that properly set, with your travel indicator foot properly set into the groove, you can now replace your bolts and tighten everything down. Again, make sure that your bolts as you tighten things down that you use a star pattern and pull down the spring tower evenly. It would really be a good idea to just hand start all of the bolts and nuts so that you know that your spring tower is evenly pulled down on the first two and thereafter everything else should follow. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't follow the star pattern from here to here. That's because you got a spring badge over here. And if I used this on a spring badge, it would rip and destroy that spring badge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that one by hand. Okay. So now, with the spring tower back, on. We're going to reinstall the spring and the top plate. And as we reinstall this, this is for the pressure test so that we can ensure that the regulator is not venting and that you've properly installed your diaphragm. So let's line all that up, tighten these bolts down. Okay, and we're going to put a little bit of pressure on the spring, reinstall 
our side inspection plug, or I'm sorry, reinst reconnect our downstream control line. We're going to slowly open our inlet valve. Slowly open our outlet valve. Completely open our inlet. Now we're going to put a little pressure to increase our outlet pressure. Bring that up. Okay, and now we're going to close our outlet. This time, this is when we do our leak test to make sure that we have reinstalled everything properly. We're going to soap our vent to make sure we're not blowing bubbles. As we say, no bubbles, no troubles. We're also going to go ahead and soap our top spring tower and our lower diaphragm case. Make sure that we don't have any leaks. So give it a few minutes, see if we're having any problems. Now, sometimes you will get a bubble. Understand that your spring may still be moving to adjust things. Movement of air inside this chamber will cause a bubble. But if you don't see any kind of consistent bubbles or <clears throat> that shows any kind of venting, you should be fine. And it looks like we're just fine.